here, hello and welcome back, and it's time to talk about another QNAP NAS. We are just getting more and more little tiny bits of information on new QNAPs that are arriving presumably next year, slowly falling into our laps, and it's great to be able to talk about these releases because a number of you, although the current generation of QNAP NASs may seem like the hardware there might be just good enough or you're looking at them going, mm, it's been a year and a half, or I'm wondering if there's going to be a follow-up, should I sit on the fence? Knowing that we kind of have an understanding about what's coming next year can be quite handy for those of us that have got data storage concerns now that want to spend our money now but are wondering about whether they're going to get something better if they can just hold on a bit longer. Now, today's video, I'm going to talk about something that's considerably more niche than anything else I've talked about. It's a follow-up to the NAS book series. It's a range that I talked about some two years ago almost. This is an SSD optimized NAS from QNAP. This isn't the first time they've released a solution that is purely targeted SSD use, but this is the first time we've seen them utilizing a desktop NVMe only system. This is the TBS 464. It is a four bay NVMe SSD optimized NAS. Just to let you know, we have NVMEs. This is what an NVME looks like. This is the Seagate Iron Wolf here, the 510 here. And of course, there are two and a half inch SSDs like this one, the WD Red. Now, these are not only consistent, considerably smaller, but also considerably faster. And the idea of having a NAS system that only utilizes these, whether you're a photo video editor or you're looking for lightning fast backups, this video is going to be very intriguing to you because this isn't, as I said, this isn't the first time QNAP have dabbled with SSD only NAS. In fact, they've done it in lots of different ways with SATA SSDs and U2, of course, in the giant kind of massive enterprise grade system of things. But this is a considerably more portable NAS. It is a NAS that can be set up very, very quickly and its um, weight and size is so small and it's utilizing a similar chassis to that of the previous generation NAS book. So it's gonna measure 23 centimeters by 16 centimeters by just three and a bit centimeters in height. It is a very, very small and discreet NAS. Now it is taking advantage of an Intel Celeron based processor there, and this is the N5105, a CPU we've talked about recently, and is forming part of the backbone, it would look like, of the QNAP X64 series of devices. It's a quad core 2.0 gigahertz processor there that can be burst up to 2.9 gigahertz. It's got integrated graphics on board. It's a score on CPU benchmark of 3,376. Uh, it supports DDR4 memory with eight gig of memory inside this NAS. Unfortunately, you cannot upgrade it, which is a bit annoying, but definitely the idea of a NAS that's taking advantage of NVMe SSDs is something a lot of us are interested in. But before you go out and wave your money in the air, just a quick note, it's worth remembering that this NAS, whether it's because of the CPU and the chipset lanes there that are built into its architecture, or just so it can take advantage of, of the available resources into internal and external architecture, each one of those NVMe slots is uh, PCIe generation, uh, Gen 3 times two. That means that each of those lanes is not going to be able to exceed 2,000 megabytes per second per NVMe slot. Now, of course, you're going to take advantage of things like RAID functionality, which is going to be good for that internal performance, but it's worth remembering these uh, these lanes aren't going to be able to take advantage of the full PCIe Gen 3 times 4 SSDs on the market right now. Now, it doesn't have 10 GBE external connectivity either, so all of that performance is going to be inside, but still nonetheless, this still has the potential to be one of the most high-performing four bay NASs in the market right now, and particularly with PCIe Gen 4 prices uh, starting to dip uh, because now PCIe Gen 4 in terms of NVMe SSD is becoming a little bit more ubiquitous. The result is that PCIe Gen 3 SSDs from numerous brands have become incredibly affordable. And therefore, despite those PCIe Gen 3 times two slots feeling like the tiniest bit of a bottleneck there, you're not really gonna notice it in this architecture overall, and certainly within that CPU and memory you've got available to you. Now, I mentioned external connectivity on this device. It's worth highlighting that it arrives with two times 2.5 GBE LAN ports there. So again, with link aggregation, a potential five gigabit ethernet on the network, but do bear in mind once again that 
any one of these SSDs should be able to maximize that performance anyway. These SSDs can be utilized all for storage. There can be a combination of individual storage pools or caching or tiering, which again, tiering in this context is a little bit unnecessary. Um, it doesn't, from the looks of things, um, look like it's going to support the ZFS file system because again, the Solera on an eight gig of memory, it's, it would push the system to breaking point, I believe. And plus, you wouldn't be able to take advantage of most of those services, even if that Celeron has the potential to support ZFS to any meaningful degree. Uh, the system also has two HDMI ports there, and both of them are HDMI 2.0, so again, 4K, 60 frames per second, but you can't utilize them independently. You can um, only utilize one, and then the other one will be either a mirrored screen or an extension of the existing screen. You can't use them for individual um, HD station applications like virtual machines and multimedia and such. Um, but still, nonetheless, it's nice to have that option there for those of you that can utilize this for easy setup surveillance. And again, this isn't a fanless architecture. So if you are going to store this remotely, it does have an internal fan. It has loads of ventilation. It's probably one of the most ventilated NASes out there. When I did my review of the previous generation NASbook, the TBS453DX, um, which was a 10 GBE but M2 SATA SSD equipped system. So again, checks and balances there. Um, when we got inside that, it was far more comparable to the inside of a modern laptop than it was to a NAS in terms of placement of the fan and stuff like that. So it's going to be intriguing to see the internal architecture of this NAS when we've got one here. One area that I'm quite surprised is the fact that it doesn't feature USB 3.2 Gen 2 and instead favors USB 3.2 Gen 1. That's the five gigabytes, uh, gigabits per second connections there and a couple of USB 2 ports, presumably to take advantage of a KVM setup on this device, keyboard, video, mouse. So if you are going to utilize this as a standalone surveillance system, because it is going to be remarkably small as a system to utilize, you know, there's a lot of potential there of how you interact with it and how you set it up. But still, nonetheless, this isn't a NAS that is going to blow your socks off in the way that the Intel Core or um, Xeon series that we talked about before on this channel have from QNAP. Of course, it will support pretty much the entire gamut of services from um, QTS5 right now. But once again, it's worth remembering that those internal NVMe SSD bays there you're going to get better performance in a traditional hard drive, but don't go thinking you're going to get three and a half thousand, three thousand, you know, three thousand six hundred or whatever from those NVMEs, as promised by some of the bigger SSD brands out there. Those two thousand megabytes per second for each of them of those slots, all four slots in there combined together, you're going to get some great RAID performance, but that is performance you're going to feel internally, not externally because of 2.5 GBE. This is a NAS that I'm interested in and of course it is an incredibly niche solution. It's not really going to form a giant release in QNAP's range of solutions but in terms of its uniqueness in the market I think it's unparalleled when we look at the rest of the NAS books that came before them. The first generation which was that kind of shared network connected device. The second generation which was that pick up and go editing station there and this third one here for me seems like it's going to be great for some of those high-end storage capabilities and certainly for those that need to bolt on a new network storage attachment for backups for live editing for post and stuff like that and i'm interested to see what happens with this device again as more information comes available to us i will let you know but otherwise thank you so much for watching click like if you've enjoyed the video subscribe to learn more and i will see you next time